you had some time to, you had an opportunity to talk to Romney when he was out here for the fundraiser. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your sense on his foreign policy, national security? Is it going to be, does he have a, is he going to have the same approach that you had? Well, what's your gut? I mean, what's your, what's your gut? I guess some people might think that's a good idea. Some people some might think it's not. a bad idea. <laughs> I, um, no, for what, I have obviously strong views about uh, yes. what's going on in the world based on past experience and people, I think, for the most part, uh, anybody who knows me knows what those views are. I believe that um, as we go forward, there's no question in my mind but what uh, Mitt Romney would be much better as a commander in chief than uh, is Barack Obama. I think Obama's made some big mistakes. I look, for example, at the Middle East situation today. Uh, it uh, seems to be growing increasingly chaotic. Uh, we've seen the Muslim Brotherhood elected in Egypt. Uh, we've got uh, the ongoing conflict in Syria where thousands of people have died. Looks like the Assad regime is going to collapse. We don't know what ultimately is going to replace it. Uh, there's continuing problems in Iraq. Um, I look at what the Obama administration has done, and it's basically head for the exits. Um, I think we have a significantly diminished capacity to influence events in that part of the world because of the way this administration has operated or failed to operate. I think what is crucial is to remember that the U.S. still has vital interests in the Middle East. Those haven't gone away. We've got a lot of good allies and friends out there, uh, both the Israelis, obviously, but also a number of our friends in the Arab world, the Saudis, the United Arab Emirates, and, and so forth. And um, those folks, uh, I think, have doubts about how valuable a U.S. commitment is at this point because you know, Barack Obama, among other things, went to Cairo and apologized for past U.S. behavior in the region. Um, he has withdrawn everything from Iraq and failed to negotiate the follow-on agreement that had been the cornerstone of what was going to be left behind to make certain that the Iraqis could take care of their own situation. And uh, with respect to Afghanistan, uh, you know, we're in a similar situation now. It's tough, it's hard, it's difficult, I know the public's tired of conflict, but uh, if we turn our backs and walk away, uh, we're just headed for trouble down the road eventually, and, and uh, this administration is not in a position, uh, frankly, to do anything about it because nobody trusts them. But doesn't President Obama deserve credit for the war on terror? I mean, you've got 20, 24 or so <clears throat> high-value al-Qaeda targets that have been taken out. Bin Laden's dead. Uh, I mean, you can't say he's been soft on terror, can you? I, have, I wouldn't say he's been soft on terror, but I think, there, I think he's made a number of mistakes. Bin Laden, fine. I went out and congratulated him when he did yeah. it, said it on camera. Um, a lot of that, as Leon Panetta said at the time, he was CIA director, and others, was uh, a lot of that intelligence that laid the groundwork for what ultimately led to the capture of bin Laden came as a result of programs we had in place in the Bush administration. Uh, it took a long time and a lot of groundwork by our intelligence professionals and by the military to get to the point where we could take down bin Laden. So it was a, a continuous effort over a 10-year period of time. Fine. What I worry about is that um, we're, if you remember what happened, for example, back in Afghanistan, we were actively involved there in the 80s after the Soviets withdrew. Everybody who was involved in helping the Mujahideen against the Soviets turned around and walked away. Uh, Taliban came to power, then there was a civil war, and they, they won. Uh, they invited in Osama bin Laden in 96. He set up training camps, trained 20-some thousand terrorists in the late 90s, and that was the base from which they launched the attack of 9-11 that killed 3,000 Americans. That's the reason we went in back in, uh, in 2001. And uh, as we now turn our backs and walk away, say, gee, we've been there a long time, or it's been too costly, we very much run the risk of seeing bad things happen in that part of the world. That is the part of the world where we're most likely to see the proliferation of nuclear capability come from. Um, A.Q. Khan, who was running a black market operation, we took him down on our watch in our first term. He said uh, within the last year in, pr in the press, in public, that the Pakistanis had sold uranium enrichment technology to the North Koreans. And we know the North Koreans now have 2,000 centrifuges operating, enriching u uranium to, to uh, uh, weapons grade status. Um, that is a, a cesspool, if you will, of uh, the kinds of developments of WMD. Today we see the Syrian situation, um, civil war, and uh, the government talking about the possibility of using chemical and biological agents against their own people. Can you imagine what would have happened if they had the nuclear reactor that the Israelis took out five years ago? 
I mean, it is a very important part of the world for us to be actively and aggressively engaged in. We should not be running for the exits. We should not be turning our backs on our friends in that part of the world. We ought to be prepared to aggressively engage, if we have to, to uh, halt uh, the further spread of nuclear capability.